Luke chapter 2 says, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. In this season, we read this story, we think about the baby in the manger. You may have even seen a nativity set in your neighborhood with the little baby Jesus. That's what we think of we, at Christmas time. We think of the sweet baby Jesus. We think of the angels appearing to these shepherds out in their fields and proclaiming this good news of great joy that had come. But if I could for a moment, I want to draw your attention to one of the verses out of the 20 that we just read, and it may not be one you would think, but it's verse 12. Here's what it says again. It says, this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. They said, this will be the sign for you. Not a sign, but the sign. So the New Testament was originally written in Greek, and some of the sense of the words get lost in translation. But the real idea here of the sign was that this was something big and significant. This was like the parting of the Red Sea that we read about in Exodus or Jesus walking on the water. We read the account of that happening in the New Testament where it's obvious that God intervened. It wasn't something that normally happened. It wasn't something that ever happened because it was the sign. And they say this will be the sign. But then they go on to describe something that doesn't sound all that extraordinary. They say you're going to find a baby and he's going to be wrapped in cloths, and he's going to be lying in a manger. Now, the manger part's a little strange, but this sounds pretty ordinary. Now, make no mistake, Jesus coming and being born as a baby was miraculous, but the real miracle had already happened about nine months before when he was conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of Mary. But from then on, it was a pretty ordinary thing. She carried him to term. The time came for her to give birth. She went into labor. She gave birth to a baby boy. She did it in a painful way, in a very unsterile environment, just like everybody else who was giving birth in that time. It was pretty ordinary. The truth is, is that Jesus entered the world very much like you or I would have entered the world if we had been born then. Now, the part about being born in a stable um, and being laid in a manger, that's not the norm, but he entered the world just like you and I did. It doesn't sound that extraordinary. But he says, this will be the sign you will find a baby. Because the reason it's the sign is because it declared his humanity. That God, the Savior, the Creator, the King of kings and Lord of lords was coming to earth and he was going to be a human baby. The sign is that you're going to find a baby. It declared his humanity. God was taking on flesh, the divine becoming man. And when they went looking for this Savior, for this Messiah, they were going to find him as a real 
live baby boy. God entered human history in this moment to provide for our salvation. What we couldn't do for ourselves, he did for us through his son. Because if he hadn't been born as a real live human baby boy, he never could have lived the life that he lived. He never could have died the death that he died for you and me. And if he'd never died, he never could have risen in victory over death and hell. It was the sign because God was intervening to come into the world and become a man so that he could go to the cross and die for the sins of men and women. There's no other way. So it was the sign because it declared that he was going to be a human. He was going to be a man, the son of God, now the son of man. But it also was the sign because it prophesied his future. Notice what it says. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby. And then it says, wrapped tightly in cloth. Now, they probably wouldn't have thought much about that. Because this is actually how most babies at this time would have been treated. They, they actually took strips of cloth and they would, most mothers would do this. They would wrap each leg individually, each arm, and then the torso. And the reason they did it, it was to protect them. This is a time when it wasn't uncommon at all for a baby to die before they ever made it to their first birthday. And so they would do this to protect them. It was like a crude first century bubble wrap to wrap them up tightly, to to control their movement, to be able to keep them warm, to keep them protected. But we also know that there was something more to this. He came into the world as a helpless baby, wrapped up tight in cloth, bound, and he was going to leave this world the very same way. He was going to come bound before those who would accuse him. And he was going to be helpless. And they were going to convict him of a crime he hadn't committed. And they were going to sentence him to a punishment that he didn't deserve, but he willingly took. He was going to die, and then he was going to be, his, his dead body was going to be wrapped once again in strips of cloth. But this time, instead of being laid in a manger, it was going to be laid in a tomb. It prophesied that he was going to be bound in that moment so that we could be set free. You see, he didn't come into the world just to be able to be here and live his life and perform the miracles and do all the amazing things that we read about. He had a purpose even from his birth, and that purpose was that he came to die for our sins. And it prophesied that future. But it's also a sign because it shows that he didn't use his heavenly power to get himself any advantages when he came into the world. It says, this will be the sign. You'll find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth, lying in a manger. This part is not the norm, but it showed and displayed his humility, that he would stoop low. It wasn't enough for him to humble himself to go from the God of heaven down to the the ones he had created. He was going to humble himself even more. It shows that he didn't come just for a select few who were wealthy enough to earn his favor. He came for ordinary people. He came for all of us. He came to be the Savior of all. He was laid in a manger. And this isn't the the cutesy manger that you see in the nativity scenes. It was was probably just maybe a few stones circled up on the ground, just a place to kind of hold the food. It wasn't clean. The the stable, it probably wasn't this nice little wood thing with the perfect little angle. It it very well could have just been a cave carved out of the side of a hill, very much like the place that he was going to be buried. He wasn't tucked neatly in the hay. He came in in the lowest possible way because he came in humility for us. It was the sign because in it we see the depths that he stooped to when he joined the human race. We see a disinterested world that had no room for him. And don't we still see that today? So many who have no room for him. We see the foreshadowing of the cross while he was sleeping in the manger. And we see the simplicity of the gospel. That he didn't come with pomp and circumstance. There were no Earthly notifications sent out. Angels appeared. But they didn't appear to the important. They appeared to the nobodies. And the nobodies took notice. And when the angels left, 
their first response, and I'm not sure I would have responded, their first response was, let's go see the thing that we're supposed to go see. Let's go see what's happened, what we've just been told about. Let's go check this out. And they get there, and they find it just the way it was told to them. And it wasn't enough for them just to see and go, wow, they actually told them, hey, listen, we just had angels that told us to come find you. They said, this is exactly, it all worked out exactly like they said. And everyone who heard it's amazed. Mary just ponders it. She stores it, treasures it up in her heart. But it was simple. The preacher C.H. Spurgeon said this, The scene at Bethlehem is one of utter simplicity. A mother, a father, a baby. In this way, the Word became flesh to dwell among us. Because what God does is both simple and clear. And the message to us is also simple and clear. Anyone who comes in simple faith to the Lord Jesus Christ finds great peace. I come to bring you good news of great joy. It will be for all the people. Grace and peace for those God favors. Today I want to invite you to come to Jesus, the Son of God who came to you as a baby. He lived as a perfect man. He died as a sinless sacrifice. And he rose a victor over death and hell. And one day he will return a king. Because we may have these lovely pictures in our mind of the baby Jesus in the manger. But ultimately, we're not going to come to him as the baby Jesus. We're going to kneel before him as King Jesus. But for now... I believe he waits patiently for you and for me to respond to his gift of love. And more than anything, that's what the Christmas season is about. We see that gift that was given. We see that the gift is the giver. And the giver is the gift. And he comes to give us peace. Let's pray. Jesus, all my hope is in you. And all my trust is in you, the incarnate word of God. You alone are my salvation. I take you as my master forever. And I pray now that everyone who hears my voice will be led of the Spirit to do the same. That they will confess their sin, that they will turn to you in repentance, finding grace and mercy and forgiveness. Pray that they will take you as their master and follow you in obedience no matter the cost. And I pray that we will all be found to be truly yours on the day that you return. May we worship you alone, Lord Jesus Christ, in this season, but also forevermore. Amen.